This is the new Toyota Mirai, and it's a little bit like a Belgian Malinois puppy because it's very clever, but it's also quite hard to live with. Plus, it has a tendency to leave little puddles about the floor. I'll explain exactly what I mean by that later on in this video. Now, if you don't know already, James May has gone and bought himself one of these. And in this video, I'm going to find out why by going through the exterior, the interior. I'm going to be checking out its practicality, obviously going to drive it and time it from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Now, if you like these kind of videos, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss an upload. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about what is so unique about this car, and it's this, look. It uses a hydrogen fuel cell. So what that does is take hydrogen gas, which is stored in a tank in the car, reacts it with oxygen, and you get electricity, which powers a motor. There's also a byproduct, and that's water. Now, I could explain the chemistry to it. You know, I'm a chemist. I actually got a chemistry degree, believe it or not. But it's all a bit confusing and boring, and so I'll just sum it up as saying it's witchcraft. Actually, if you want to find out exactly how it works, click on the pop-out banner up there because there's a really good, easy to understand explanation on carwire.co.uk. Anyhow, the electricity powers a motor which is mounted at the rear and that has 182 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. And we'll see just how quick it is later on in the video because I will be launching this car, of course. Let's talk about the design of this vehicle, starting here at the back, which for me is the least successful angle. It's all right, but there is something that really offends me. Look at this, right? I've got the CarWow carbon fibre sticker truth, and it will reveal that this hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is for some reason fitted with fake exhaust. Why? However, I can forgive that because from side on, this car looks brilliant. For start, this rain topping version has these gorgeous 20 inch alloy wheels. And then there's the fact you've got this whole coupe like profile going on. Looks great. Now the old Mirai looks a little bit like a Prius that had been built in Minecraft. Well, that's because it was actually based on a Prius. This one is based on a Lexus LS, which is far posher. And as a result, it's lower, it's wider, it's longer, and therefore it just looks more luxurious. In fact, the front end, I really like. Sort of reminds me of a shark, which is kind of appropriate considering this car produces water as a byproduct of the chemical reaction of hydrogen in the fuel cell. Because of all the technology on board, fuel cell vehicles aren't cheap. And this Mirai starts from £50,000. However, it is £10,000 less expensive than the old Mirai, despite being more advanced. If you want this range shopping car, it's going to set you about £65,000 though, so be warned. You can get quite a lot of other cars for that money, can't you? Speaking of which, you might want an electric car. Click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow to check out the very best electric cars and the savings that you can get on them through CarWow. There's also a link in the description for that as well. Alternatively, if you want to do that at a later date, simply Google Help Me CarWow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. And you can now even sell your car through CarWow as well. I quite like the inside of the Mirai. Does it feel like a car that costs £50,000? Well, £65,000 in the case of this range-topping version, which gets the sunroof, wireless charging, heat and cool seats, and leather on the seats as well. Does it feel that expensive? Mm, kind of. You know, the materials are generally pretty nice, and it feels solid. Now, there are a few things that I'm not so keen on, like this big bezel for the central screen, and then this big plasticky area here. Hmm. Not a big fan of the steering wheel bosses in Toyota cars either. But other than that, it's fairly good. Oh, well, apart from this. Why don't they just have buttons for the gear selector rather than this weird knobby thingy? As for the driving position, well, it's electrically adjustable on this car. It's good and there's a lot of adjustment in it. And electric seats. And the seats, oh yeah, they are super comfortable. They really, really are. There, there is one thing that I'm not so impressed about in terms of the comfort. Now, I'm the kind of person that likes to drive along with the arm on the window ledge, but the window ledge on this car is a little bit narrow, so you end up doing that. Gets on my nerves. What also gets on my nerves is the fact that the door bins aren't quite large enough. I like a door bin that can fit a big bottle of water, and this is, yeah, this barely works really. Look, it's, yeah, that's, that's not great. The rest of the storage is fine though, look. Cup holder, cup holder. Sorry, key. Cup holder, storage, USBs, and decent storage in the glove box as well. 
As for the infotainment system, it's not got the smartest graphics considering this is such a high-tech car. And I think Toyota's infotainment system is generally okay. It's not the best on the market, but I just connect my phone to the car anyway and use Android Auto. That of course, if you've got some crappy Apple, then you can use Apple CarPlay. There's also a digital driver's display. And once again, it's fine. It does a job, but it's not the most high-tech or expensive looking either. Considering this car is built on the Lexus LS's platform, it's nowhere near as spacious in the back seats. All right, I mean, look at this, right? Headroom, yes, there are some cutouts in the roof, but even then, there's not much extra space above my head. Someone over 640 is gonna struggle back here and the roof does curve in, so you kind of banging your head off this bit here. Then there's the knee room, which is all right, but foot space isn't so good and you can't slide your feet under the chair in front. And if you dare to carry three people in the back at once, the person in the middle seat is not gonna have a good time at all because look at this. Oh, gosh. Right, here we go, look. Yeah, and obviously you're gonna have to sit legs akimbo because of this huge lump in the floor. The reason that's there is because there's actually a hydrogen tank just running like that underneath the seats. And there's some more hydrogen tanks as well. You see, if I pull this down, lift this up, you might think I'm gonna show you some through loading, but no, I'm not. I'm gonna show you that bit there and there's, because there's hydrogen tanks behind the seats. Oh well, oh wait a minute, I do like this though. This armrest with some storage and look, you've got controls for the climate here in the back, which does include heated and cooled seats here in the rear as well. And look, we've got cup holders there. I like that. I also like the fact that the seats are super comfy. And if you need to carry a baby, look, you do have ice fix anchor points there. Though really, this isn't the best eco-friendly family car. If you want that, click on the pop-out banner up there to check out my review of the new Skoda Enyaq. This isn't the most practical car when it comes to the low capacity either because the boot only has space for 321 litres. By comparison, a VW ID3 has a boot capacity of 380 litres. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can check out my review of that car and see the saving you can get on it through CarWow. There's also a link in the description. Now you might be wondering what the heck's going on here. I didn't know this, but even electric cars and fuel cell vehicles, they still mainly use an old fashioned 12 volt supply for their electrics. So you can flatten their batteries, as I found out, if you leave their ignitions on. Who knew? Anyway, I would like to show you some space under here, but there's not really any. And I would like to fold down the rear seats to show you how much stuff you can put in there with the seats folded. But you can't fold down the rear seats in this car because of those hydrogen tanks in the back there. And that brings us to 509 things about this car. Toyota has this habit of not putting buttons which should be grouped together in the same location, sometimes scattering them throughout the car. For instance, here on the Mirai, all the controls for the digital driver's display, which allows you to look through loads of different information, trip stuff and things like that, done through the steering wheel. Apart from toggling between trip A and B and the odometer, which is done by pressing this button over here. One of the main problems with this car is that there are only 11 hydrogen filling stations in the whole of the UK. For instance, if you were to buy one of these and you lived where I'm originally from, a place called Warsaw, which is right slap bang in the middle of England, you would have to travel 80 miles to the nearest hydrogen station, which is in Sheffield. Not ideal, is it? Now, hydrogen isn't as cheap as you might think it is either. So it costs about £12 per kilo and this car's tank will hold about 5.6 kilos of hydrogen so you took around 70 quid to fill it up and Toyota says that will give you a range of 400 miles which means that when you do the maths this thing will cost about 17 pence per mile which is no better than your average petrol car. While the wireless charging pad is nice and big so it can accommodate even weird shaped phones it's a bit of a problem that it leaves your phone clearly on display like that. So if you get WhatsApp, you might end up like getting distracted by it. Like that. Even worse, when you go around a corner, there's a chance your phone may slip out of the holder and end up running around the footwell. And that's going to distract you even more as you reach to try and save it. You know, at the beginning of this video, I said the car was like a puppy. Well, just like a puppy, it needs to get rid of its wastewater. So when you turn it off, it has a little wee wee from the back. Look, there it is. Just weeing. Problem with that is that when you go visit friends or something, the car then piddles everywhere, all over their driveway. It's a little bit embarrassing. While this car produces its own electricity using the fuel cell, it does have a little one kilowatt hour battery pack on board just to store some electricity as a backup if you need a power boost. As a result, it does do regenerative braking like a normal electric car, and you can put it into braking mode like that, which means that when you lift off the accelerator, the motor works in reverse, 
to become a dynamo and put electricity into that battery. The only thing is, is that the braking effect when you lift off isn't quite as good or as strong as in normal electric cars. And it doesn't have that ability where you can drive it just using the accelerator and lifting off. Speaking of which, the brakes themselves feel a bit odd. So you press the pedal and not much happens then. You press it a little bit more and all of a sudden you've almost got an emergency stop style of braking situation. Hmm. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. It's five. Because the fuel cell requires very clean air to operate properly, this car is fitted with a two-stage particulate filter. So as you're driving along, it effectively cleans the air, it removes the oxygen it needs for the fuel cell, and then the rest of the air, it passes through into the cabin. So you're effectively driving along, breathing in mountain fresh quality air, even if you're driving through a dirty, polluted city. This car has some super cool surround view cameras, and they effectively allow you to see through the car's bodywork. So look at this, right? Look. Can you see that? <laughs> so you know what's going on around you, even from inside the car. It's nuts. Even though the Mirai is powered by an electric motor, it is lighter than a standard electric car because they have to carry around these heavy battery packs. For instance, this tips the scales at around 1900 kilos, whereas something like a Tesla Model S, the new Kia EV6, or an Audi e-tron GT, they all weigh over two tons. While the view out the back window is okay, if you've got some big person sitting in the back seat, they might block your view. Don't worry though, because you can get this car with a digital rear view mirror. So if you flick a switch, you then get a feed from a camera on the boot of the car. No, you're probably looking at my crotch. You dirty buggers. Hydrogen fuel cells can sometimes make weird gurgling and whirring sounds. And so to try and hide that, Toyota uses the car speakers to act like noise cancelling headphones to just block out those weird noises. Right, let's see what this Mirai is like to drive. Well, first things first, obviously it hasn't got an internal combustion engine, but instead it's powered by an electric motor. Though the power for the electric motor is coming from the fuel cell underneath the bonnet. So when I put my foot down now, you get this weird kind of whiny sucky sound, which I think is the hydrogen going into the fuel cell and the science happening. In fact, that is the sound of science. It reminds me a little bit of a supercharger wine on a normal petrol car. And I guess it's the supercharger wine of the future. Well, some people's version of the future. Now, another thing about this car is just how comfy it is. Sometimes with electric cars, because you haven't got an engine whirring away, drowning out other noises, you really pick up on like wind noise and tire noise. But in this car, it's silent. But even when you're going quickly, you hardly notice any outside noise at all. Then there's a the suspension. Normal electric cars with their big batteries are quite heavy, so the manufacturers have to fit stiff suspension in them to stop them leaning loads in the corners, whereas this is lighter than an equivalent size electric car, so it glides over bumps beautifully. It really is just soft and relaxing, but it's not wallowy at all, and it actually goes around corners pretty well, so the steering is light when you need it to be in town, and then actually meaty enough when you're going quicker to give you confidence, and the car does turn into corners nicely, and because you've got the drive coming from the rear, it pushes you through the bend so it feels actually surprisingly fun for a car like this. I'm actually loving this. I'm blown away by how good it is but I shouldn't be surprised because it's very toyota -y. You see Toyota is famous for making reliable cars and cars that do the job they're designed to do very well. However it occasionally does these projects which I'm sure that their CEO Akio Toyota has his eye on so the employees just go one better still and they really really work hard on those cars and develop them way beyond they would their normal cars. An example is the GR Yaris which is just better than it should be. And then there's this, which is better than I imagined it should be as well. And I'm sure they're selling it at a loss because the way this thing drives and the technology on it, you know what? I can really see why someone like James May has a car like this. You know, it's quirky, it's interesting, it's comfortable, it's different. And there's something just lovable about it that makes you want one. I really like it. <laughs> Who knew? Toyota says the Mirai will do 0 to 60 in nine seconds, but I'm going to find out for myself using my specialist timing gear here. Yeah, I'm going to launch this car because that's really important with a fuel cell, right? Let's do it. Okay, go. It's not as quick as a Tesla. Oh, Toyota are a bunch of liars. Liars, I tell you. This car did 0 to 60 in 7.83 seconds. It's good. It's really good. Well, it's better than I expected. Like I said, not as quick as a Tesla.
So then, what's my final verdict on the new Toyota Mirai? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you're someone like James May and you're after something that's quirky, that's packed full of cool tech and is a joy to drive, go right ahead and buy it. However, for everyone else, the sheer lack of hydrogen filling stations around the country means that, quite frankly, you should avoid it. It's a shame because I do love it. I do. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, please give it a like. If you really hated it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you don't want to watch any more videos, click on those boxes there. And if you really, really hate me, then click on that box there.